Namaste students. Today the topic of uh, discussion is uh, discrete time signal processing. Under discrete time signal processing, we will be discussing about the introduction to infinite impulse response IAR filter design in specific about practical frequency selective filters. To begin with in earlier uh, units we have studied about discrete Fourier transform and fast Fourier transform where a signal in time domain was transformed into frequency domain. Now the signal which in, is in frequency domain has to be processed or analyzed for various uh, applications. So hence it is necessary that some of the frequencies are needed and the others need to be rejected. So the spectrum of that particular uh, uh, spectrum of the signal needs to be altered. So this type of uh, filters which are used to alter the shape of the spectrum are called as frequency selective filters. So here these filters selects some band of frequencies that are needed and rejects others and hence they are also called as frequency shaping filters. So we know conventionally there, there are four types of frequency shaping filters low pass filter, high pass filter, band pass filter and band stop filter. So now uh, let us look into what is first an IAR filter. Specifically we are beginning with an analog IAR filter. So we have a system continuous time system H of t whose input is X of t and output is Y of t. So a preliminary idea about this continuous time system gives us a very clear picture that this system can be represented by means of a differential equation. In IIR filter, the important factor is the part of the output is taken back and given as input to the system. Hence, the response of the filter is infinite. Right? For example, you give just one sample of input to that particular system and further on even if you do not apply input also, the filter will be continuously producing output. This is of the because of the fact that a feedback is always present in IAR filter. So uh, this uh, differential equation when you apply Laplace transform uh, to this differential equation we determine the analog transfer function which is given by H of s is equal to summation k equal to 0 tm a k s k and divided by 1 plus summation k equal to 1 b k s k. So the denominator factor 1 plus a factor very clearly states that a feedback is always present in IAR filter. So H of S is nothing but the Laplace transform of the impulse response of H of T and H of uh, S is nothing but uh, implied by uh, finding the inverse of H of T. So now uh, having this in mind we will just see what are the ideal frequency selective filters. So here we are seeing that uh, this is an ideal low pass filter. So low pass filter characteristic here is it is allowing only specific frequencies in uh, at low frequency. So only from minus omega c to minus uh, to plus omega c uh, the frequencies are being allowed and this is called as pass band. So remaining where the frequencies are not allowed higher frequencies which are not allowed is called as a stop band. So this uh, filter can be modeled by the equation h of j omega equal to 1 for minus omega c to omega c and is 0 for other things. Similarly an ideal high pass filter here it passes only signals where, where the frequency is greater than omega c and here it is again on the negative side it is greater than minus omega c. So h of j omega is modeled conveniently by means of this equation right and similarly band pass filter. So band pass filter it allows only a specific range of frequencies. So here it allows only from omega c1 to omega c2 and here minus omega c1 to omega c2. The representation of this is also very clear. So the response is equal to 1 only in these pass bands otherwise the response is equal to 0. Similarly band reject filter or band stop filter is 1 where the response is equal to 0 for a specified band right. So from omega c1 to omega c2 here the response is 0. So for the remaining frequencies the response is going to be equal to 1 right. So the important characteristic of ideal frequency selective circuits is we can see here very well that 
the transition region from pass band to uh, stop band is said to be very sharp so that is why it is called as uh, ideal frequency selective filter anyhow we know that practically it is not possible to obtain a very sharp transition from pass band to stop band so we will discuss first what are the disadvantages of ideal filters or uh, in fact we can tell that why we cannot realize ideal filters if we know that we then we can move on to practical frequency selective circuits the first point is ideal filters are non causal i would like you to recollect what is called as non causality property of systems that you have studied in signals and system you can take a pause a minute of pause and just recall what are called as non causal systems right so what are non causal system what is a causal system a causal system is one if it produces an output only after the input is applied right and we know the condition for uh, this uh, satisfying causal system will satisfy the condition h of n will be equal to 0 for n lesser than 0 right so only an output will be produced only after an input is said to be applied so you can see the example here of non causal and causal so in non causal you can see here it starts the response here starts at time uh, uh, not only at time 0 it is existing even beforehand right so this type of system is called as non causal system whereas for a causal impulse response the response will start only at time t equal to 0 right so uh, here we are again stressing on the point that ideal filters are non causal why because you can go back and just look into your uh, response of uh, all these ideal frequency filters you can see that this system from the graph you can see that it is a non causal system that is the output of the system is in such a way that the output depends upon the future values of the input also so such type of uh, uh, causal system or non causal systems are not practically realizable right so that is the reason one of the primary reason for which ideal filters cannot be realized practically so hence it is not physically realizable and the second important function as we discussed earlier is there cannot be a very sharp transition from the pass band to the stop band it is not again uh, possible practically so having all this in mind we will go for practical frequency selective filters in specific we will be saying about the frequency response characteristics of practical frequency selective filters specifically i have mentioned here magnitude frequency response it is because of the fact that any uh, frequency response from a frequency response or from a spectrum of a given signal uh, we can get both amplitude details as well as phase details here we are restricting ourselves to magnitude frequency response because of the fact that IAR filters are said to be non-linear they are said to have non-linear phase later on towards the end of the unit you will understand the fact why uh, IAR filters are said to be uh, non-linear phase filters hence we will be just concentrating about the magnitude frequency response so here you can see that this is the practical uh, frequency response of a low pass filter right so what is actually frequency response it is the uh, response plotted as a function of the frequency right more specifically we are talk when we talk about analog filters we use this uh, notation of omega right you should be using this notation of omega for analog filters and when we go for uh, digital filters we will be using the other notation for omega so here uh, returning back the <coughs> important uh, factor here first when you look into this frequency response you can see that first there is it is not a flat one right there is a possibility of occurrence of ripples in the pass band right as well as in the stop band you have the possibility of occurrence of ripples right and then the transition from pass band to stop band is not rapid it is not abrupt there is a gradual transition from the pass band to the stop band so omega p is called as 
fast band edge frequency in radians per second right so from 0 to omega p all the signals will be passed right and that is why omega p is called as fast band edge frequency in radians per second right and then uh, here uh, for a notation here we are using omega p the other omega as fast band edge frequency in radians per sample in general if we uh, calculate this uh, uh, frequency per uh, second then we go for the smaller omega it is always not necessary that the sampling time should be one second if it's going to be different if the sampling uh, time is going to be two seconds or three seconds or whatever it is then you need to alter and that is present by this omega p right the relationship between this omega p and this omega p is omega p is equal to capital omega p divided by t and a p is nothing but gain at pass band edge frequency that is here at the pass band edge frequency what is the corresponding gain that we get that is called as a p similarly after it transits over here we get what is called as stop band right so omega s is said to be the stop band edge frequency in radians per second equivalently it is represented in radians per second so as for the reasons i told earlier now omega s is the same edge frequency but it for radians per sample the relationship is given here and a s is said to be the gain at stop band edge frequency so at this point what is the corresponding gain is called as a s edge frequency this del p and del s which is given over here represents the uh, ripple in present in this particular uh, frequency response so what is t t is called as uh, sampling time and this t is equal to 1 by f s so where f s is called as a sampling frequency so now this entire uh, frequency response can be modeled like this magnitude is given as modulus of h of a j omega it is between 1 minus uh, del p to 1 plus del p right so this del p is nothing but uh, uh, the attenuation factor in your pass band that is del p del s is the attenuation factor or gain factor in your stop band right so here uh, uh, since due to the presence of ripples the gain varies between 1 minus del p to 1 plus del p right for the pass band edge frequency 0 to omega p similarly h of j omega s is uh, uh, the, attenu the attenuation or gain factor varies between 0 to del s for omega greater than or equal to omega s the important characteristics of this practical low pass filter firstly h of j omega cannot have an infinite sharp cutoff from pass band to stop band yes and secondly a small amount of ripple in the pass band and stop band is usually tolerable it should also be taken care that the ripple should not be uh, very high it should be under a tolerable limit the transition of the frequency response uh, from the pass band to stop band defines a transition band so this region is called as transition band and the difference between the frequency omega s minus uh, uh, omega p represents the width of the transition band the width of the transition band is this right similarly the pass band is usually called the bandwidth of the filter so usually you refer about the bandwidth right so this pass band uh, difference in frequency here that is omega p minus 0 which is omega p is called as the bandwidth of the filter then the as we have discussed already the magnitude of the pass band ripple right we know del p is magnitude of pass band ripple and del s is uh, magnitude of the stop band ripple so it varies between 1 plus del p and 1 minus del p right so these are all the characteristics of a practical low pass filter the same thing will be applying for higher other filters such as high pass low pass band pass and stop uh, band stop filters with the specific frequencies so here before going on into any further topic we should uh, understand the overall uh, ir filter design that you are going to study in this particular unit right so initially what we do is we will be given the specification of the filter that is what type of filter you want to design whether it is an lpf or hpf or bpf of uh, bsf that to specifically our ultimate aim is digital iar filter design that is what we are targeting we need to design a digital iar filter right 
So first we get the specifications of the filter. From the specification of the filter, is it possible for you to directly to jump into a digital filter? No, it is not possible, right? So what we have to first do is, we should create an analog filter prototype, right? In your electronic circuits or in your LIC, you would have studied about all these analog filter, uh, analog filters, right? So those analog filters characteristics has to be prototyped over here. So this first step here will be analog filter prototype design and hence and uh, we will be going for two techniques Butterworth filter approximation and Chebyshev filter approximation where we will be deriving the or we will be obtaining the characteristics of a analog filter right after this this analog filter will be converted into a digital filter by using transformation techniques so to transform analog filter to digital filter we use transformation techniques such as bilinear transform impulse invariant approximation derivatives finally after the ir digital filter is designed we need to realize the structure of that particular filter this is the entire overview in which your unit will be carried on so in the next class we will be studying about how an analog filter can be prototyped using Butterworth filter approximation techniques and Chebyshev filter approximation techniques. Thank you.